Hello, and welcome to At Your End Step. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And uh, we have another fun-filled episode for you folks this week. Sorry it's a little late. Yeah, I'm a little under the weather. Got a little, little bit of that, that cold. I don't like it. My wife gave it to me, and I blame her for it. <laughs> That's a bad gift. It's a terrible gift. <laughs> yeah, you know, they don't tell you in sickness and in health, it means that you're probably going to get the other person sick, or they're going to get you sick. <laughs> That's like the clause, so you have to like take care of each other. Is that the fourth uh, Santa Claus? That's movie? correct. That is the fourth Santa Claus. The illness clause. The, uh, <laughs> the accidental illness and injury clause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, uh, so that's why we're we're a little bit late. Uh, hey, at least it's like two weeks in a row. So like you know, back on track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. I mean, it's better than nothing. <laughs> it's better. Maybe, than, it's, maybe it's better than bad. Jury's still out. It's good. Yes, it's a lot like log. It's a lot. It's a lot like log. <laughs> So we have a, a really just a you know a couple things to talk about community. A lot, of, a lot of the focus is going to be on the GPs that happened over the weekend because it's standard and standard's good, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we definitely want to talk a, a bit about it. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our community topics. Um, the first thing is sort of a, a follow up to the uh, Todd Stevens situation. Um, uh, he broke his silence uh, and did post something on Twitter. It looked like a response. I mean, it was a response. I was going to say it looked like a prepared response. Uh, but if it was prepared, it was prepared poorly. I mean, it, it is a prepared response because yeah. he didn't just say it off the cuff. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't prepared enough. Um, uh, you can still go find it on his Twitter, I uh, assume. But uh, <laughs> it was uh, it's not good. Um I think that uh, 2018 has been like the year of white dudes apologizing for who they are. And um, this was a bad one. Uh, He had good, he had examples he could have found and like literally copied verbatim that would have been better than this. He got some good sub tweeting from Jerry Thompson, who literally posted a picture of Googling how to apologize. Yeah. Which is very good. Um, Somebody else with that also posted like how to not actually apologize. And like the first response to that on Google was almost exactly what what Todd did here. So, correct. Um, it's uh, bad and pretty unacceptable and uh, almost like a little bit shameless. Uh, they're, oh, it's super shameless. They're at, they're at the end of it. Um, and I, I guess, like, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do about it here on the podcast. Uh, nothing. I, 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 said, I said the week before that it was odd that he hadn't, like, denied it. And here's what I would say about his apology. He still hasn't. He still hasn't <laughs> denied it. So he just sort of has decided that he's going to say that other people talked about it. He won't talk anymore about it. But please make sure you you stay tuned for his his streaming. It, he turned his pseudo apology into an advertisement for him. If there had been a t-shirt cannon, it would have made sense. So it's true. It's weird. It's a weird response. At the very least, it, you can shoot t-shirts out of a t-shirt cannon. The only thing Todd Stevens shot is his career. Yeah, you want to you want to delete that part and go back <laughs> and try again. You want there's a couple ways you can go about that joke. I'll give you another take at it. If you uh, no, I'm gonna, right, leave, I'm gonna leave it. Fair enough. You know, I I think that like, I, you know, th- we're not talking about this in a lot of new nuance, and I'm not sure that it really deserves it. But I, I will say, you know, a lot of people have said that you know, in that scenario, if you if you protest, then you, you know, then you look like you're you know, like you know, protesting too much, right? But I think like at the end of the day, innocent people say that they are innocent, right? And sometimes guilty people say they're innocent. But innocent people always say they're innocent. So it, it is a weird statement no matter what. It is just weird. Correct. So um, to be fair, I will say, it, you, know, you know, the only thing that's positive that has come out of this compared to other situations is that the accusers didn't get thrown under the bus. And people tried to. People were desperately trying to figure out who these people were. Star City did not say anything about it. And Todd himself did not say anything about it. And I think that's pretty important because, like, you know, the concept of being anonymous is a is a pretty important like concept when you talk about these things, and um, you know I think good on Star City for how they handled it. Good on those other places who investigated, trusted, and did that. So um, if you're going to still watch Todd, I, I would I, more power to you. I guess I, I hope you recognize how weird this whole like his whole response was. But I think just by the way the community's reacted to it, um, everyone's kind of seeing through it. You know, yeah, it smells like crap. It's probably crap. Just another corrupt politician. <laughs> is that what it is? He's the mayor of Value Town, right? Oh, that God! 
I, that's so, not my joke. So, I stole that from okay, somewhere. Okay, well, I'm just saying, I don't know if this is a segment where you even need to make jokes, but, woo, you, uh, you're getting some good ones in there, I uh, guess. He's trash, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go out and say it. He's trash. Yeah, I, I think, oh, my gosh. After that, was... like, he, he had one moment where uh, he could have said something and not made people think that he is just human garbage, and he decided to, like, double down on it. He was like, please give me the human garbage special, please. Um, and that's where he's at in my life. So, <laughs> But that's my opinion. My opinion does not necessarily reflect at your end step LLC. I, I, it's, yeah, it does. I don't know what to tell you. Like, it does. You own the equipment, man. Like, oh, okay. But I also agree with you. Like, uh, there you go. I, I think like the end But of it the, does represent. Like, there's... There are so many ways he could could have gone about this, and still continue to stream. Like if he wants to do that, like what you know, whatever else. But like to turn your apology into an ad for your streaming, and then just be like, "I'm never going to comment on this again, man." Like I wish I was a subscriber to him so I could cancel it. Like, <laughs> like I I would like I would like for him to feel me not watching because I've not I've not watched ever before, anyways. But. Right whatever so yeah i there 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 is like something that they said about uh you know it, 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 redemption and whether people could be redeemed and uh, to to a certain extent I, I definitely do think that people could be redeemed but they definitely have to show like sympathy contrition yeah contrition like, for their actions important. and uh uh he didn't in this statement and at, at a certain point in time you're going to be like well i don't care what you say after that actually yeah, that's it so, like, okay cool that's kind of where i'm at and i think it's kind of where mike's at so we're going to move on to something else that interesting that was that did happen that we kind of didn't cover, but uh, I guess uh, I've been playing a lot of Arena, so I figured it would be something interesting to talk about. But um, over the past week, um, they actually did a couple of interesting events that they uh, kind of used, uh, not used, but um, partnered with popular streamers to kind of create these custom events on Arena. Uh, so they partnered with Gabby, uh, Sparts, and Day9, uh, and they had two kind of one constructed event and one limited event that you could actually join into. Uh, Gabby's event was the Greedy Dominaria Draft, where you could uh, draft Dominaria uh, pretty much as normal, but you got to play two lands per turn, and then you actually started the game with nine cards in hand. Uh, and Day 9's uh, constructed event was standard, obviously, uh, but it was all instants were banned, so you could not play any instants in your deck. Um, now, I don't know if it count, counted cards with Flash. That would be my only question. But I would assume I, not, but what, how many things does this one have Flash? You have the, the, the Warden. That are, like, playable? Yeah, not, yeah not the, very the, many. the Merfolk. Like, that's what I'm talking about. What yeah. else has Flash? Uh, the uh, Technically, there's some enchantments that have Flash Some of the Elder Dragons do. Yeah, Cro- Chromium, right? Yeah. Wait, what, what enchantment in, still in standard has Flash? Uh, the one in Guilds of Ravnica. The, the three mana and a blue... For uh, it, it ETBs, it taps your creature. It doesn't tap its both the Oh, yeah, yeah, you have capture your sphere. And then okay. one, uh, there's the, the, the from Dominaria, because I've been playing a lot of Dominaria <laughs> draft. Uh, Swift, um, uh, what, right? Isn't it the, the, the two it, mana one? Seal away. Seal away, That's yeah. That's it, yeah. And uh, there's the 3-3, three, three, the five mana 3-3 three, three that uh, blinks yeah. the, the a, a legend, a historic card. Yeah, nice. Uh, card's a pretty good with a, uh, would you have the last trigger of Time of Ice? Oh, yeah, no, it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's, I do I, that. Yeah, it's yeah I've good. got to do that recently. It's, it feels great. I, uh, I, I enjoy the day nine's like, I need to play standard, but make it easier. Uh, so <laughs> the interesting thing with that is it's similar at that point in time to Hearthstone, right? Yeah, very much so. Hearthstone doesn't have any instance. Uh, they have traps and stuff like that, um, uh, and like secrets. I guess that's the other one: secrets and seals and what have you. Um, but that that do can like trigger or happen on your opponent's turn. But you don't have anything that you can actually play from. As far as I know, it's been a while since I played Hearthstone. Yeah, so, right. um, <laughs> well, but hold, hold my format. It's called F Control. That's <laughs> that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's it, it was kind of an interesting thing for them to do, and something that they can do uh, on this platform, seemingly relatively easy, is kind of have these modified uh, you know formats that allow people to have a little bit of fun. And you know, Magic Online has um, you know variations in formats and everything like that, but. I just thought it was a cool thing, and I imagine it's something that we will, you know, potentially see in, in the future uh, as well. And, you know, I, I think that um, they're making smart moves by, like, partnering with actual streamers and getting, like, they're, they're 
hilariously enough, doing a better job of, like, getting, like, this event did a better job of, like, if you played a bunch of it on Arena, like, you know who Gabby Sparks is now. Like, you know who Day9 is now. You don't know who any of the pros are, unfortunately, in the pro player. Who's who's going to be, you know, who's player of the year this year? Who is going to be, you know, this and that in the pro club? Like, you don't know any of that, but you definitely know who these streamers are now. So, they're oddly doing a better job of promoting streamers than they are of their actual pro players. Uh, but that's another story, I suppose. But really, that's going to be everything we have. Oh. Well, hold on now. Okay. I can add to the conversation. Sure, go ahead. I, I will say, I, I, as far as Arena, I still haven't started playing more of it, and I don't know. Maybe, now I'm going to start feeling like the old curmudgeon who's just like, well, but there's this there's this magic online. You know, I mean, that person who's like, hey, you know they have instant coffee now, and it's like, I don't know. I like to pick my own beans i don't know uh <laughs> sweet energy beans uh but i did i went to um i went to a small party on monday just a gathering some friends and um i was wearing my red mana shirt but th- a lot of people also know that i do this podcast but i had a couple of people who don't talk to me about magic approach me talk to me about magic and specifically talk about arena with me nice like that they had downloaded arena and were playing it and enjoying it and i thought that was interesting now of course i, I was wearing a shirt that said Please come talk to Magic. <laughs> yeah, of course. But again, people who like like one person does play, but pretty casually, and the other person's like, "Oh no, yeah, I, I heard about Arena, and I wanted to try it." And I think like, you know, that's purely anecdotal, but it hasn't happened before. No one was like, "Hey, I tried that Magic, Magic online." online. Yeah, yeah, I downloaded uh. that horrible like uh, horse faced program. <laughs> also, dinosaurs exist, <laughs> so I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> oh man. But I, I, I think, like, that is, uh, like you said, anecdotal, but, but kind of telling. It, it's kind of interesting to be, like, you, you might not actually, like, have that interaction where you wear something, like, yeah. Magic-affiliated. And people are like, oh, I know that. Like, oh, do you, you know, play Arena? It's like, yeah, I, yeah, I do. Or, like, yeah, I know. I, oh, I play the paper card game or stuff like that. You're like, oh, that's really cool. Where normally you just would never have that yeah, no, interaction. It was just, yeah, it was, it's just like, oh, okay. And I think, like, the more I hear about Out in the Wild, the more, like... I've already admitted that even though I don't like it, it's definitely a good thing so far. The buzz has been legitimate, but I think like the more the more I hear out in the wild, the more apt I will be just to talk about it positively. <laughs> like because I wanted to be like the well, actually I don't like it very much, but then it was like, but it was like what, like deer out in your yard, you know, like that that uh, vine where the guy sneezes and the deer run away, or it's just like I want to sneeze though because you guys are like in my yard now, so I want you to stay. <laughs> Keep eating that arena grass, <laughs> right? Exactly, and like uh, I think you know, adding more players to the game uh, is definitely a, a net positive to the game itself. Um, so I, I, uh, I I've I've been playing it every day since I committed to playing it every day, and it has been I think it, it's been overall enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of you know porky picked it there no, a little I, bit. No, it's not just that. I just I do really enjoy because I think that's the second or third time you've made the same of like I've committed to play it every day, and I know I know for a fact that if if your wife heard that's the one thing that you've committed to every single day, she would just like lose her mind. It's like the same with my wife, where it's like you know I've actually committed to do one standard league a day, and she's like. We could like work out and be like, mm, I really committed to this. But I could sit down <laughs> and play Magic Arena. <laughs> well, what I've actually been doing it is I've been playing it on my breaks at work. Hmm. So it's just like a, a thing I do on my break. I can like jump in and probably play like a because the, the the best of one games go super quick. Even if you have like a really grindy you know draft deck, sure, uh, they still go relatively quickly. And you can kind of just jump in and then play a game on on you know on a break or on your lunch and then like jump back out. And so it's going to be really great when you can get it on like a tablet or, or a mobile phone. That's when it's going to be fantastic, but that's still a, a bit off, unfortunately. Uh, but that's where I've actually like been able to do that when I'm already like away from my home where I can actually do more productive sure, things. Sure. That makes sense. And I, and you know, I'll play a bunch of it too when I can do it on my phone. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there, I guess someday, someday. Uh, so let's hop into competitive before we do so. Of course, want to give a shout out to Comic Town, our lovely sponsor. Uh, just so you know, they're going to be hosting, uh, regionals here, uh, coming up, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, it's going to be modern. So if you want more information about, uh, potentially your local, uh, regionals event, uh, definitely check them out at, uh, worldlikecomictown.com or Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. So competitive standard, um, we're going to talk about the GPs first because that's that's where all the exciting uh, you know stuff really is, and I figured we would talk about uh, GP Lily first. 
Uh, it was a total of 1,339 players, uh, all battling to take down this tournament. It was won by Mono Red, uh, piloted by, uh, I'm going to butcher this person's poor name, Itine, 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 uh, Busson, uh, defeating uh, Gabe Nassif, Gabriel Nassif here in the finals. Uh, Etienne was on Mono Red, and <laughs> it was the eternal struggle. It was Mono Red versus Mono Blue. Uh, and the war uh, temporarily has been won by Mono Red, but it rages on. Uh, it does rage on. I will say, uh, taking a, when we take a look at these lists, um, Nassif, I've played the Mono Blue deck a fair amount, and uh, Nassif played the version that you can't beat Mono Red ever with. <laughs> so he just went for as many X1s as possible, and you just can't do it. You can't. You got to play like Night Vale sprites if you have any chance against that deck. Yeah, Chain Whirler says hello. Yeah, so. Chain Whirler says a big hello to <laughs> almost that entire list. So. Um, but I feel like uh, the Mono Blue deck is is something that like all this is just like a budget deck for Magic Online, which it it still super is. But the deck is legitimate. That, that same person I was having an arena discussion with uh, actually was talking about. He's like, I, I'd like to play more standard, but the format just feels expensive. And I was like, Ah, uh, I can give you a like a. Like at least tier two standard deck for twenty dollars, and he was like, "Really?" I was like, "Yes," and definitely mono blue is what I'm talking about. But even yeah. the red deck is, you know, a, you know, if you look on there, it's like a hundred dollar deck. So yeah, uh, for, depending, for... depending on how many rekindling phoenixes you're running, correct? But yeah, you, yeah. Could, you could run no rekindling phoenixes, play a pretty budget version of it, and have a good deck. So um, while standard is full of a lot of mythics right now, which we'll look at some of those decks. Yes, uh, there are a couple of decks like this where it's nice to see it and just be like, "Hey, you know what? Here, here's a bunch of islands. Go play." Yeah. And, you know, that, that's really approachable for, for a lot of different people. And, like, even if you are building this on something like Magic Arena, um, you could definitely grind it out and get pretty far with it, you know, um, just by there are a couple of, like, the uh, decks that you unlock that are the new player experience decks that actually fill out a lot of what is in these lists compared with, you know, some of the uh, the, the low, overall, like, low rare count that you have in this uh, this particular list. Like, you could really, really easily build this in a matter of weeks, especially um, it, especially if you put a, a kick a little money towards it. Even if you don't, you could just you grind it out and, and uh, kind of get there. So um, I, I did want to take a look at the mono red list to see uh, if we're still if this is the low to the ground version. Uh, and it looks pretty low to the ground. Yeah, we have the, the Firebrand yeah, and the Lava Runner. Yeah, it's still playing Wizards Lightning and everything. So it yeah, is, yeah, this is, is the, the 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 kind of playing Frenzy and trying to go off with your Steamkins and stuff like that. And um, we've seen the the red list kind of vary between mid range and this low to the ground list. So yeah, some have gone kind of big. We see four treasure maps in the sideboard. Yeah, list. some have gone obviously the main. Um, I do say I really like the treasure maps a lot more than like. You know, week one and two, we were seeing a lot of risk factors, and I talked about how, like, playing against that card and that card in general still just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. Just did not like that card, and it, and it looks like the format's adjusting to that, where that yeah. card is just... Especially for the for, for these lower-to-the-ground versions of the deck, where that's that's a whole turn of just honestly doing nothing. Like, it, it's just not good enough, unfortunately. Yeah. So. But, I mean, Treasure Map is, uh, you know, one of those... Uh, one of those cards that I know that you and I both have liked at various, you know, uh, various forms of standard. So it's nice to see that it's like kind of getting embraced here a bit. Well, the board plan then for like the Jeskai decks, which are, you know, if you see some of the Jeskai decks, especially the ones that are adapting to things like Dawn of Hope, uh, it, it's pretty rough if they if they are able to turn the corner against you. Um, but your sideboard plan then is to play treasure maps and, and you'll just scry with your draws. Treasure map scries plus experimental frenzy is pretty spicy. Yeah. Uh, and then you get these treasures and you have bun a bunch of bane fires. So you can either draw cards or you might be able to just kill them with a bane fire. Right. So. <clears throat> bane, bane fire is just like one of the like best cards to have in like this current standard format. Um, just because like it's an, it's an answer like if your control is just like ah I can't can't be controlled it's just such a such a beating it's like well you can just burn them out yeah just, just try <laughs> to get them there fireball uncounterable is pretty <laughs> all right sometimes yeah it's not too bad there's also a fight with fires you bring in too which are also not as uncounterable but also big fireballs big so. fireballs ten damage is a lot of damages <laughs> um, looking at the mono blue list it the, I, I feel like this list has kind of remained the same um, for a, a lot of its. Uh, uh, you know, time being in standard. Um, I, so I, I will say I, I, I like the adaption of these lists, especially going to like four dive downs. It's yeah. pretty important. Um, I, I still would like to, Warcamp Marauder has, has its place and does some powerful things, 
But man, this list against Mono Red is just real rough. Yeah, it, it's definitely probably your 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 weakness um, in a, in a lot of different ways. You could definitely uh, try to figure out a way to improve that matchup. Uh, I know that, um, you know, uh, maybe you can find some some sideboard slots to to improve that matchup. I yeah, know we have and like he, and he didn't. I, I want to point out that he did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So which which is fine. He just decided that was going to be his his bad matchup and. It stinks that that was for him in the finals, but yeah, uh, I do enjoy sleep though. Sleep, oh, yeah, sleep, sleep. <laughs> Normally, the way to try and do it is with diamond mares, and he's only playing one. Uh, I, he does go to the four, the full four exclusion mages yes. on the board, which is nice. Um, but like, if you're just bouncing, like if your opponent just playing things like you know the Viachino Pyromancer, then well, I don't know how many exclusion mages you want to be using. So, <laughs> right. Um. Then uh, next up, we have a couple of Gugari mid range lists, and I haven't compared these lists to see if there's actually you know what kind of differences that the differences they have, because I know that you just slapping Gugari mid range on a on a deck could mean like so many things. Yeah, there's so many builds running around, um, and really, it's all just kind of a difference in how many what planeswalkers you're playing, how many you're playing. Uh, if you have Carnage Tyrant in your main deck, how many Carnage Tyrants are you playing? So it's all just kind of a balancing of all of those different factors. Um, looking at these two lists, they're not like drastically different, I would say. They have a lot of the same cards. Um, the differences you'll find are the presence of things like Midnight Reaper, um, which is a, a card that's slowly creeping into main decks just as a way to uh, obviously draw a lot of cards after you know, something like a board wiper uh, or, or just like make it really hard for your, your opponent to to block in, in all honesty because it, it feels like the more cards that you give you know these kind of decks these kind of archetypes like the worse off you end up being. Um, which is what you want from for mid range. You you might necessarily not you you don't necessarily have the, all the the best card draw, um, but um, with these kind of builds you, you have a lot of it. To be you, perfectly you have honest, a lot of card draw and you just have a lot of selection. There's so much explore. Oh, yes, and like you have between fine finality and, and Golgari fine broker, you have such a like inevitability yeah. in like dirtly matches. Your opponent needs to figure out their plan. Um, counter spells are still pretty powerful against them, but. Most of these decks now have gone to three or four corner four sirens, sirens, yeah, and it's just like that's their way. Like, because like, here's the thing: you're gonna have to. Everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I'll just load up on like, you know, uh, what, uh, like the saddle the wreckages and things like that." But here's the thing: like everything else is still attacks. Everything else still gets value. Like, you eventually are gonna have to figure out like what can you beat, and uh, these these decks are just good at it right now. Um, I will say, Brad Nelson talked a little bit about. Uh, he we'll get to his list because he he actually took second in New Jersey, but he talked about why he moved away from uh, Black Green Mid Range. The only problem he said there are so many open like spots in these lists because you can't find the best one, and they're all trying to beat each other. Yeah, which is putting them into some awkward places card wise. And even when you look at the third place list, like it is all over the place. So there's a lot of cards in this deck. Um, so like it's very powerful, but on any given week, I think it's really hard to nail down. Hey, this is the right list. Yeah. That, that that is the dif difficult part with these, and why there is like so much variation. Is you, it, it, I feel like it's definitely if you're um, if you are someone that likes to invest in a in a deck in a particular archetype and likes to tweak it from week to week, then like you can make green black work for you. But if you are the kind of person that just wants to have like a deck that you never have to look at, <laughs> then may maybe. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe you might want to try to find something else in the standard format. You can format. just put together the green black tool uh, toolbox and just like go to town each week. Right? Again. Yeah, but you know, so there's some people out there that just like don't want to have a list the list they have to mess with from week to week to like play yeah, for a meta game. That's true. Um, but I, I feel like green black is sort of the the tinkerer's uh, deck. It's someone who likes to make a lot of changes and try a lot of like one off weird cards because you have so much to explore. You'll probably see them, uh, and if you don't need them, you could probably bin them. Um, but that's been like the most effective like play pattern that I I've had with green black is is being able to like bin stuff early that you don't need and then like find broker it back or uh, find it back and it's just like it's so good it, like it just feels very effective at what it does when it gets going yeah oh and the planeswalkers are uh, are stupid good yeah you know, like between Vivian Reed and the two Vraskas like and and now Karn Karn is starting to see some play in yeah. this list too again which I mean again you're just looking for value engines and I think that makes a lot of sense so. Um, and I guess, especially in the mirror too, where you're trying to tax 
all the Vraska's contempts and, and Assassin's Trophy has, has already gone way down in play. Yeah. Uh, they're just good. Yeah, Assassin's Trophy is definitely more uh, of an effective card in Modern than it is in Standard. It's still very good in Standard, but you can't just, like, overload on them. Yeah, I played four week one, and, like, it's a fine removal spell, but definitely is, like, the cost is real, and I, and I think, like, you've seen a lot of, in the formats, like, you know, I played Mono Red twice uh, in, in, our, in our open, you know, day, and there's not a lot of things you want to use that spell on, because right. giving them land is kind of critical, and, like... Okay, sometimes you got to kill a two two one. Like, I'd rather use a cast down on that. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of interesting again to see that 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 tension between mm-hmm. these green black lists. Um, I know that there's a just kind control list next, but I figured we're probably going to talk a lot about that in Jersey because that's what Ellie Cassis was. I, I do want to mention this one because I think this is actually kind of different. Okay, because he's playing four crackling drakes in the main. Uh, okay, yeah, that <laughs> is that is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> and a nib miss it. Uh, this is a, a build that I've seen a fair amount on Moto. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see it here. Yeah, uh, it has a lot of the same cards that you see that like we'll see when we look at like you know Eli Cassis's list, but it definitely has like win conditions in the main, as yeah. opposed to just like here's my Teferi's, let's go. Right. Um, you know, we the version of Eli Cassis's we'll talk about is the more traditional version we've seen that's playing a lot of Azores gateways and all four copies of. Um, expansion explosion, but mm-hmm. this list is you know it still has a lot of counter magic, but it, it's a, it, it is really going down with a crackling drake. And like the cool thing there is like you can sort of play protect the queen with those crackling drakes near the end of the game and just just win. Yeah. So um, you know, if you look at all a lot of the removal in the format, the black removal kills it, but red removal like are you gonna have lava coils in this deck if, against control in boarded games? I mean, it, it certainly doesn't feel like a thing you want. No, and it, make, it, it makes it, again, it makes it some tough decisions. So I think, it, it, again, we don't have to spend too much time on this. It's, it, it is certainly interesting. But uh, I do want to make mention of, and this was an Ella Cassisa list too, Star of Extinction started to get some play. It's really good against the Black Green decks. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, you know, it's something that is, a, it's just, it's a one-stop shop. It gets rid of, it could get rid of like a Memorial Folly, which is super important to uh, their game plan. It gets rid of all the threats. Like that, that's what you want. It, it, it certainly does, uh, and it's also not entirely dead. I guess in in mirrors. I guess you know. Right. But uh, yeah, it is kind of hilarious to see that card. We're just like, oh, oh my. <laughs> I mean, seven mana. It definitely has to be like what you want it to be, and that's just kind of what it is. Um, it, it it just it. You know, it's super impactful yeah. uh, to what you need to do against the, the green-black decks. Yeah, I think when you're talking about, like, cl- comparing it to, like, Cleansing Nova, like, because we just said how important the, the Planeswalkers are in yeah. green-black, and, like, having, like, okay, I spent all this mana to kill the creatures, but then, like, they're getting two extra spells worth of cards out of their, you know, or, or whatever, out of their Planeswalkers next turn, and that, that, that clean sweep of, you know, spell land, like you said, Planeswalkers and creatures, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. It's just, again, it's just kind of jarring to see. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Because uh, it's just so expensive. And, like, I, I mean, we all kind of laughed when we saw that card. It's just, like, it's a, it's a wild card to see printed. Uh, it has, like, huge numbers on it. Hey, I love that card. I I know. I understand. I've, I've played against your uh, Sunsong and Fire Speaker <laughs> Brawl deck. 20 life per thing. Per thing. No. No, thank you. It's very do, good. Do not want. I've also enjoyed seeing that card randomly go up almost $10. So it's <laughs> that, just like, That is okay. also true. Um uh, the next list we have is uh, a deck that you've kind of been uh, playing a little bit with. Is is it Phoenix? So uh, yeah. Another Crackling Drake deck, but yeah, this one is using Arclight Phoenix, which, man, that's that's a little mythic that could out of this this set. It seems. Yeah, that that card is is rocketed, and I know we talked a little bit about it last week, and I actually wrote uh, you know a little article for Legit MTG this week. Ding ding. Nice. So you'll go comment on that, but. Um, yeah, I've, I've been playing a couple versions of these deck on, decks on Magic Online. A uh, friend of the show, uh, Brian Keller, who's been on a couple of times, him and I have sort of discussed different lists as he's pulled lists from places I haven't looked at yet, and I've done a lot of testing with them. I, man, Arclight Phoenix is powerful. Now, the format is starting to adapt to it. If you look at some of the black-green lists, things like uh, Death Gorge Scavenger is starting to see some plays. Seal Away is coming back into the format. Exile, in general. Yeah. But... Uh, these decks just do something that other decks can't do. Now, this is a, a little bit of the the more g- uh, general version of it. A lot of the lists here and also the one list in New Jersey look like this, where it has four Enigma Drakes and four Crackling Drakes. Um, this one only has... This is one only... I'm sorry, three Crackling three, Drakes. Yeah. My apologies. Um, and you see things like Maximize Velocity, which is very, very fun and sweet with your Drakes because you just clock them. <laughs> so... Um, 
the only issue with like things like um, Enigma Drake is one of the other things that people started doing is playing a Graveyard Exile, Sentinels Totems, Silent Gravestones, um, Remorseful Clerics. They all make Enigma Drake feel a little awkward. Not Crackling Drake, though. It continues to still see those things. Uh, so I, I think that you know I have moved away from Enigma Drakes uh, based on a version. I'm trying to remember. I don't know if it was the game podcast or not. That's what that's what Keller was telling me about. But um, and I've gone to a list that just has Arclight Phoenixes, Goblin Electromancers, and Drakes, and it's felt pretty good. So I, I think like when, when you look at the format at large, there's still some general weaknesses with these kind of builds. You still have a, the most robust removal. Beacon Bolt is very good, but um, man, the, any draws where you have two like more, more than one Phoenix in your yard, it, it is really hard for those any other deck to catch up because even if they get ahead or get to board parity. You can, like, against Black Green, the most consistent line is to, like, okay, I have blockers, go. And then you just keep drawing cards until you can overwhelm them, because they have to attack into them, and you can always bring the, you know, it, it almost feels like Arc Like Phoenix should be able to block, <laughs> but it can, and it does, pretty effectively, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, really like these decks. Um, the, the next iteration you'll probably see in a couple of these lists have them is to play um, the blue-black spell, I'm trying to remember the name of it, um... I think that this one might have it. Discovery. Discovery and... Dispersal. Dispersal, that's the one. Um, and that's the card that we have been sort of trying out. Um, with a Goblin Electromancer, Discovery does a lot of work for one mana. Yep. And is a very effective... Because you get to see essentially three cards if you want to, and is effective at putting, um, you know, Ar Arc Like Phoenix in the graveyard. Like, at one mana, it's it's a, better than Preordain. So that's... That's pretty powerful. And then Dispersal is, is a legitimate thing in the format. Something that I, you know, I hadn't even realized until I started playing with it. But, like, one of the weaknesses of the deck are things like Lyra Dawnbringers or even Carnage Tyrant. And Dispersal gives you a way to deal with it because they don't target. And you can you can act, you know, you get to do the old bounce and discard. You can yeah. get rid of things. Now, you do have to play Black Sources You for do. That. And we've been playing a couple of Watery Graves. And I, I want to experiment with playing, like, what? Because, like, right now it was two Watery Graves. I want to try a Watery Grave and a Drowned Catacomb just because the two mana has been legitimate, like, as, as like, an actual issue. But, or the two life, I two should life, say. Two life, yeah. Uh, but it's it just, it's a cool way to see it go. And I've really, I don't know, I feel, I feel like this has been a lot of fun to see these decks come into being. Because, like, when we first looked at these cards, I was like, man, this feels like a pipe dream. I don't know. And seeing, like, so many different people work on these decks and then now starting to show up in GP Top 8s and everything else, like, I, I, I'm, I'm literally trying to put together a trip for uh, GP Wisconsin and, uh, you know, Milwaukee. And this is probably what I'm looking at playing as some version of this deck. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really cool. It's really cool to see, like, um, there be a standard metagame that is diverse enough. Like, even, like, it's weird how this is, like, the smallest the standard will ever be, but feels vastly more diverse <laughs> than previous standard. And um, it feels like people can actually iterate and they can make modifications and, like, actually grow a deck over time and there's still room for it instead of like oh well this deck just isn't viable anymore and it just gets thrown in the trash yeah we've got at least two d huge variations of jeskai control we talked about how golgari could be any number of things including abzan if you wanted to yeah um you know the mono red as you said cycles between big and small you know multiple versions of is it selesna keeps adapting as well like this has been fun it's been really fun and uh i i just you know, I literally want to go to Milwaukee just to have more chances to play standard because it just, it just feels, it feels like home. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, ah, oh, standard's back. Where yeah. you, where you been, man? <laughs> it's you, been too long. You went to Calidus, tried to find yourself. We get it. I back, understand. Backpack through Amon Ket, saw the pyramids. I get it. I understand. I get it. But now you're home. And, you're uh, here. <laughs> when you're here, you're yeah, here. you just literally just made it all of Garden Ed. <laughs> Uh, is there um, anything else that you want to talk about? We, we should mention Selesna Tokens to round out the top eight before we move on. Perfect. To, um, uh, and Selesna Tokens I want to mention because there's been a couple versions of these builds. Specifically, though, I, I don't know if you noticed this. One of the most played cards in both top eights, or both top 32s, I should say, Dante's Vanguard. Yeah. All the borrow space lists, which are more borrow space lists in New Jersey. Yes. But are sort of like that's their go-to two-drop. And, and I think we've talked before, last format, about how that card's kind of unsung, like how difficult it is to deal with. Uh, and in the current standard format, like especially in the, these kind of lists, in the Boros Angels lists, where you either need to save your removal or post-board, your one-to-one removal isn't that good. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, against Boros Angels, you have to save Vraska's Contempts because their creatures are so powerful. Against this deck, like, they're playing Sapperling Migration. Do you want Vraska's Contempts in your deck? <laughs> so it makes the Dantos Vanguard really tricky to deal with. And heck, I played against a, a version of this list online that had um, um, Sarah's, or not, it was not Sarah's, on Sarah's Wings. Oh, wow. And, um, and I was just like, Oh no! <laughs> like God, that's the last thing you want like, to see. Like as the is it like the is it spells deck? It's like oh, I better have a bounce spell because I literally cannot win. It, it doesn't <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, like uh, it, it flies, it doesn't tap. I can't. Oh my gosh! So it uh, it is a little bit rough, but uh, I think like I, I'm surprised to see only one copy of Tristani in here. But we we see Venerated Locks on and and the power of March of the Multitudes. And uh, I, I got to say, a lot of the decks, you know. That is still the card to be fearful of. If you're the Golgari deck, if you're even the mono red deck, like you have to be careful and and think about what what they can march the multitudes for every single turn, because it can just turn a board state so quickly. Yeah, uh, having uh, recent experience playing that <laughs> card in limited, that card is busted. Yeah, it, I mean it really is. And, and like you, know, when you look at the way these decks are set up, and they, they take good usage of things like Amara, I, I just Man, it, it is that that is a scary card, and like these decks would be decks without that, you know, like these would, but like that element takes a pretty generic mid range tokens list and turns it into like this weird like once you get into like turns five, six, seven, you're getting kind of tense. You're like, I need to get through now because yeah. they're going to draw one of these, and I'm going to lose because of it. Yeah, I um, I I do think that these uh, decks feel pretty like pretty weak to um control still yeah that's probably true um i haven't played enough to see like how true that statement is but um just a board wipe feels fairly effective against what they're trying to construct with these with these kind of decks and i will say fiery cannonade has, has seen a ton of increased play uh because of decks like this and, and it's it is probably where exactly you want to be in the format because march is an instant speed fiery cannonade cleans it all out um and, and i got and like i i don't disagree with you there because like even like the the any any red deck can play fire cannonade to some extent. Even the mono red decks have had access to it. And man, if they go march and they spend their turn doing something like venerate a loxodon, and then you could just blow them out. Yeah, it, it is tough for this deck to recover. So I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but I, I'm sure that there are things that you could do uh, to figure out how to make that a, a bit of a a, a non issue. Um, I do wonder because uh, I know Tuka- uh, uh yeah Takatli Honor Guard is a uh, uh, one of the uh, you know, white want two drops that have really come into their own just for the sheer fact that it, it shuts down a lot of what Golgari is trying to do. I mean, shutting off Explorer is a big deal. Yes, 100%. Uh, so I wonder um, if... Uh, I know this list has some on the sideboard, but I wonder if those get moved to the main deck. Uh, we've seen that in the Boros list for exactly. sure. Exactly, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like, I don't know what, like, Hunted Witness is doing in this deck. Like, it's, it's a it's a one drop that, like, you get to buy back. Like, you get to get again it's because you're playing venerated loxodon you have to play these one drops like that yes but it just feels it it feels like i would i would rather figure out a way to not play that card that feels like to me screams like the worst card in the deck i mean sapling migration's right there so i totally agree um (laughs) sapling at least makes two bodies i mean technically 100 wisdom this does at some point so like (laughs) Um, I, I think like though, if you want to know where the answer is, like obviously going bigger has always been the thing, but a card to look out for that's seeing a ton of play in both of these top, or these top 32s, it's in the sideboard of this deck is the immortal sun. Do you know that card's almost $25? I mean, that, that card was really good in like commander. And, sure. Like, I, I just, I, I was going through and looking at the values of cards from rivals that sets all of a sudden was worth a ton of money. We're kindling Phoenix was like the card that was worth money in it. But now if you go in through and look, it just randomly has a lot of value in it. So like, I guess go buy boxes of rivals. Well, I mean, like that's that's definitely like good for like those the sets to. Like, oh yeah, 100%. especially Ixalan. It feels like Ixalan like didn't have a, a a room to have like they had all these interesting cards that you know we we saw the powerful cards, um, but it, you know Carnage Time was always going to be good, um, and Vraska's Attempt was like always going to be good. But it's nice to see like other cards shining through and increasing the value of these older sets. Yeah, I think that's important too, especially since like the design of Ixalan. Just be honest, for constructed failed miserably. Yeah. yeah, none of those tribes are seeing play. Yeah, and you still have a chance. You know, blue green Murpho could be a thing with Simic. That, that um, that's our biggest hope. And we could get more vampires with you know black white could give us some stuff to support vampires. I mean, you could you could print something like Blood Baron of Iscopa and like people would people would be like, they I'm will doing not this. print that card. Just, you know, <laughs> I am just saying it's they protection. Do, they don't do protection anymore. But you could print a card like it. <laughs> <laughs> the blood boy yeah <laughs> the blood yeah. boy of his <laughs> the blood boy <laughs> it's your blood boy um 
I'm so sorry. I did Blood that. Baroness I, of Viscopa. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's better, I suppose. Yeah, I, there you go. Um, but but I do think that like, yes, Ixalan has gotten more play. It still feels support as like a support color, if that makes sense. But I, or support color, his support support set. Support set. Yeah. But like, I agree with you. See, these cards seeing some play and, and adding some value back out of it, I, as opposed to just a few cards. And, and honestly, you you can tell that the the sets are still not great. If you look at certain cards, I mentioned like the blue deck we already talked about, Siren Storm Chaser. That's a five dollar uncommon right now. I don't know if you know that because the set wasn't great. So um, if you're sitting on a bunch of those, good job. <laughs> you did it. Um, and I know we've had trouble even locally finding copies of like Charter Course for the the blue decks because, again, like do you just not have them? I, I definitely found an extra four yesterday. By the way, I was so happy. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, man, do I have a full play set of these? I was lending some to uh, uh, to to Dave, you know, former podcast, and I was just like. Here's more. Here's another four. Oh yeah, <laughs> we did it. So, Dave, I still need that back though. You are not keeping those. <laughs> so, but yeah. So I think the Immortal Sun is a way for some of these decks that are not as heavily Planeswalker based because, you know, in, in Selesna you could be playing, you know, um, Huatli, but it's still not very great. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, but being able to shut off all the Planeswalkers, and I think like when you look at the Golgari decks, one of the easiest ways, you know, it's like, oh well, they can interact with enchantments and artifacts pretty easily. Well, if they're cutting down on things like Assassin's Trophies, then it's honestly just their Planeswalkers. And those can't do anything when the Immortal yeah. Sun's in play. So, uh, for further understanding of that, read the Ixalan storyline. Uh, <laughs> That's true. So, uh, did you want to move into New yeah, Joyzy? Yeah, let's, let's talk about Joyzy. All right. Um, it was a, they listed as 1200. I don't know if it was 1200 even or more, uh, but I assume between 1200 and 1300, just, just to be safe. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, as we alluded to, won by Jessica Control, piloted by Ellie Cassis, uh, defeating uh, Boros Angels, or Boros, Boros Mythic Cards, <laughs> piloted by Brad Nelson. Um, and uh, this was, um, you know, really a, a pretty interesting and, like, different um, top eight that we saw at GP Lily. I mean, we, we have some crossovers. Um, we have... You know, Jeskai, a lot more Jeskai than we, we saw in France. Um, but we also have Celestia, but a couple different flavors, actually. Um, but uh, really, the, the dog of the town was, was Jeskai. Jeskai was the, the, the deck du jour. Um, to, not deck du jour, but the, the, the deck, a deck I think a lot of people were talking about at, you know, coming out of this tournament. And um, uh, Ellie Cassis's take, uh, it does have a, the, the four of, of Azor's Gateway. Uh, which is kind of a, a card that we've seen tick up in getting uh, played. You know, it's a good way to uh, filter, obviously, um, which, you know, these, these decks can, can definitely take advantage of. Uh, but that, that flip side is is maybe not... I don't even know if that's, like... The, 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 I don't think it's the primary reason why they're even, like, sort of playing it. But if you ever get to do the, do the dang thing... Uh, it's it's probably pretty good with like a explosion. Uh, yeah, and he's playing copy of Banefire in the main too. Just to, you know, just to really go with it. Uh, so um, so yeah. Uh, like I said, I think it's definitely more used for you know filtering out cards that you don't want. But um, I, I definitely like a lot of what uh, this deck is doing, and th this is like the first time that I, people have like. It really feels like Explosion is the second coming of Sphinx's Revelation. Not, maybe not as, effe as effective as, you know, or dominant as that card was in, it, in its respective standard. But, I don't know, sometimes this kiss just kills them. And, like, that's good. <laughs> I, and I think, like, looking at that, like, the expansion, like, is nothing to, like, quibble with either. I think, like, just playing against this a fair amount, like, I how often they do things like cast expansion, like, when I'm playing, like, Radical Idea. And I was like, okay, I'll expansion that. Because, like... They can just do that. Yeah. Um, and when you're talking about it's like so many decks playing one, like removal spells, like things like, you know, like, okay, I have this Teferi and I untap two lands, right? And they're like, okay, Vraska's Contempt. You're like, cool, I'm going to Vraska's Contempt your best thing. Yeah. I, I think, like, those play patterns are tough to really play around. So, like, when you look at four copies of a card that for most of the game looks like it does nothing, the play patterns with that card are actually much better than that. Like, it, it does a fair amount until the point that you're just, like, you're doing things. So, and, like, you know, like, like I said, you know, even if it's just, you know, in the mid game dealing two or three to a creature, but getting to draw two or three cards, like, that's the best removal spell you, you right, ever played. Yeah. You know, so uh, I do think the, the play patterns are different enough from Sphinx's Rev. It doesn't lead to. It, 
Swings of Revan Teferi would have been like the death knell of a format. Like it would have been awful. Yeah, correct. Um, so that doesn't lead to the same play patterns. And, and you know what? Good, good on good on Watsy, good on Wizards. We can never, we can't have a no. Swings of Revelation. No, in, in the next format, they took care of Asperia. She gone. Yeah, no more revelating for her. <laughs> Swings of Revelation. I'm going to die. <laughs> That's a that's a tough revelation to oh have there, gosh. Xperia. Just like turned to stone by electric light orchestra. Just playing in the background. <laughs> I turned to stone. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a tick. Oh man. Um yeah, I think this list is just is very interesting. And I, I think like I still think these decks have a lot of room to get better too when we get better mana. Obviously getting Azorius is gonna change that too, but like the fact they still have to play ionize is just uh it feels so bad. But yeah. I guess at least technically you do have a way to, to finish them off with this version that plays Ionize, <laughs> so there's that. Um, I think the sideboard plan here is really interesting, because this is a Teferi deck through and through, but he's also playing the Immortal Sun on his sideboard. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, cards is just good. I mean, like, you're also, I'm assuming when you do that, you're also bringing Bring in your, the Rekindling your Phoenixes, creature the Lyras, the Nivmizit, and the Nezahal. And maybe, that, like, that, I mean, that's, what, five creatures? So maybe you're just maybe you're just straight boarding out the Teferis when you board that stuff in? I, it wouldn't shock me, to, to be perfectly honest. Because that's a pretty, again, it's, it's a good plan against against Golgari. And, like, you know, your, your Teferi, you know, if you, you're trading Teferi for all of their possible Planeswalkers, and you're probably doing okay, especially since, like, they're going l- much lower on removal than, obviously, post-board, so. Yeah. And, like, they might be, you know, across the course of the game, they might be able to deal with a few of your threats, uh, but, that like, you're going to stick a Nezahal or a nib and just, like, go to town. Yeah. So, but I think that's, I think that's a really sort of interesting board plan. So, also, a shout-out to Revitalize. Yeah. Just, just uh, be probably really good against, like, the mono red decks. <laughs> just, like, gaining four and drawing a card. Sure, I'll take that. Um, but I, I definitely like, you know, a lot of what, you know, these, the control decks are doing. And again, this is another one where we have a lot of variation between different builds and different lists. We have some commonality cards that are always going to be there, but, you know, you do have a lot of, uh, still have a lot of flexibility in how you want to build your deck, which is really, really cool and not something we've had in standard for what feels like forever. Um, but I want to talk about, I I want to talk about Boros Angels. I want to talk about Boros Mythic, Boros Mythic cards. <laughs> Boros Mythic. I know your affinity for, for the Boros Legion. Uh, oh, I don't like these decks. <laughs> I know, which is why I want to talk about it, because I, I know you don't. Because if you did like them, you'd be playing them. Well, th- maybe maybe that's true. Like, uh, looking at this list, I have the Lyras. I have the History of Benalias. I have some number of Aurelias and Resplendent Angels, and I'm still $200 away from playing this deck. Yeah, so, it's, it's rough. I just I refuse to buy back into Rekindling Phoenix. Sorry, everybody. I just can't do it. But. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow, for sure. Um, but uh, why do you think that this, this list kind of, uh, other than the pilot, uh, you know, Brad Nelson is very good at playing <laughs> yeah. standard. Yeah. Uh, do you think, like, there's a particular reason to sort of play, like, these these kind of decks, this, this Boros deck? I, I, so, I, I think, like, th- these sort of tap-out mid-range decks, like, make sense. They, y- you are presenting th- three, four, and five, the most powerful things as far as creatures you really can be doing. You know, Resplendent Angel is obviously very good here. Um, Aurelia is very, very good. Rekindling Phoenix is very, very good. Lyra is very, very good. So, like, y- again, the same thing, that, that sort of, you know, mythic Boros makes a lot of sense because your curve is the best possible curve. I don't like this deck very much, the, these decks in general, because it, I, I, I've always been the kind of person, I like I like decks that can like change their game plan. This never can. Right. You're, like, you are always doing the same thing. You literally have zero selection, uh, and if you're not curving out, your deck's probably not bad, or probably not very good. And, and Brad Nelson, in his article this week, even said as much, that like you've got to keep tweaking these lists every week, because you shouldn't have a stock Boros Angels list, because it has to be reactive to the format. It just has to be, you know, you, whatever is outside those, that core, you have to be paying attention to. Um, so I, the, this, these decks are just so up to the whim of the top of your library that I just like, it, it, trust me, it, I, I love nothing more than just jamming down some mountains and some planes and playing five drops. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, but may, like maybe if it had a planeswalker that you were more interested in playing, you know, if you're small to the ground, a Johnny makes sense, but it doesn't really make sense here. Um, and like. Hawatli doesn't really do anything here. You know, I, I wish that Planeswalker was like it, it better. <laughs> I wish that, I wish that Planeswalker cost four mana. But well, and now yeah. here's the thing. Maybe again that 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 card could see more play in an Anaya build. Maybe when we have like Stomping Ground, it'll make more sense. Uh, but I'm very interested. But in Naya, please. Just like, making a, having a Planeswalker that's like has a hard time you know playing through like Lightning Strike and stuff. It's true. 
but neither here nor there. But I think like uh, so these decks are very powerful, and again, like even like history banalia, you're just playing, you're you're just presenting and asking the format to answer you. Yeah, and, and I think like against a lot of decks, especially the Golgari decks that again have, are all trying to beat each other, like they have a lot of good things, but. If they're three, you know, if they're if they're three, four, and five is like more explore guys, more explore guys, right? And you're like, okay, well, here's Aurelia, okay, well, here's Lyra. Then it's like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm so, in big trouble. Um, but I think like even looking at the format at large, things like um, Vivian Reed, for example, is very good against this deck. Uh, yeah, like it just shoots down all the angels. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I like I totally don't fault anybody for playing this deck. It is super powerful, but I think that. Even compared to like mono red, you don't have a secondary game plan that is compelling to me. You just don't. Like you present your board, if your opponent deals with it, you're living off the top of your library and you have nowhere to go. So I honestly like the third place Boros list a lot better. Yeah, the the Boros mentor list. Now granted that's also because this is this is getting really close to where you and I were trying to push yeah. early on in the format. Yeah, this this is the doing some of the same like similar patterns that we saw, like we saw that Militia Bugler was was probably fairly powerful because it could get a bunch of really good cards. It could get things like Aurelia. It could get things like uh, Siege Gang Commander, uh, which are really really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, doing doing like a lot of the things that we really really liked that we saw initially in the Bor like the Boros could present. Um, yeah, and I, I do like a lot of what uh, a lot of what this this deck is doing um, for sure. Yeah, I think like when you look at it, you know, you, you yeah, you, like you said, makes a lot of sense. You get to play some cool one ofs because of this. I will say, um, Direfully Daredevil is a card that makes a lot of sense in the form right now for the same reason that we said like intervention ex or not ex uh, expansion explosion yeah. does. Uh, so that, that that's pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, I, I just like sort of where this deck goes. And again, another Dantos Vanguard deck. And, you know, um, Legion's Landing here is very good. So. Uh, but yeah, this is where a lot closer to where I was looking at the beginning of the format, including like Slipblade Vindicator, which. It's just a very powerful card. So, um, glad to see Integrity Intervention get a little play there. Like that card a lot. Yeah, for sure. So, but yeah, I like that build of Boros. I, I, I think like the game plan um, has a, you know a little bit more push to it, even if it's maybe a little bit too out there with some of the one of things like. Um, I don't know how much I, I'm interested in playing like Bounty Agent, for example, but maybe it's good enough. So. Uh, but yeah, I, again, I, I like Boros decks a lot, but Boros Angels just like scares me. It's just, it, it's it's the same to me as like playing like um, Mono Green Stompy really is to me. Like you know, you you put you present your game plan, and if your opponent has it, you lose, and if they don't, you win, and that's great. But you don't have any secondary outs. You're not like drawing anything off the top of your library that gets you back into the game. You no, know, you don't have your experimental frenzy, you know, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So no, that that that's definitely true for for sure. But yeah, I, I like this mentor list just because I like. More aggressive decks, <laughs> and this is definitely a, a lot more aggressive. That's fair. And like to me, this is a deck that can really uh, benefit from playing um, a bunch of lava coils. Oh, absolutely. Um, where you don't care, like your board is going to be um, good enough where you can just kill a creature and still continue to, to attack on it. So yeah, lava coils quickly. Like we already knew it was going to be good in the format, but obviously rekindling phoenix is a major reason why it's good. But also all these you know these Drake decks, like having having ways to kill both Enigma and Crackling Drakes while also exiling Arclight Phoenixes is uh, is is a big deal in yeah. the main. So I know a lot of people are pretty high on like Justice Strike, which is still pretty good. But there's a lot of ways where Justice Strike can just sort of like get you, make you not feel very good about playing that card, and you don't feel bad is nearly as bad about playing. Lava coil, at least in higher numbers. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you still have some some creatures that that are are still going to give you fits. You still have your Aurelius, you still have your Lyras, but just trying to kill those those Aurelius. No, Aurelia, Aurelia, I think is like one of the more tricky cards to deal with in this current standard. I, I mean, in red, you know, and you know, this goes back to a conversation we've had so many times. So I think one of the compelling reasons why this format feels so good is because the removal feels like. It doesn't feel like Fatal Push was. It feels like a puzzle that you have all the answers to. You just have to solve the puzzle. You know, yeah. we mentioned how Seal Away is seeing more play again because of things like the Phoenixes. But man, like Seal Away feels really bad when your opponent presents you with Aurelia and History Banalia. Like cool Seal Away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And like so your Lava Coil feels bad against like, Aurelia, but then it's like, well, what am I supposed to play? You know, can't play Cast Down. <laughs> so like what it, it it really does make you start playing this match okay well cool maybe i'm playing exelon's binding okay well now you have to play a four mana enchantment so i hope your deck can do that you know it, it is it is cool to sort of see 
like how decks have to build with their removal. And that's why I think like I, going back to the first place list, like hats off to Eli Cassis because I think it's been hard to find the right Jeskai control list when you're balancing all the removal that Jeskai can play. Right. Um, so now uh, after talking about, you know, sort of the, the first three lists, we do have a couple of Celestia lists that are, are you know, pretty different from each other. Uh, and the first one that I wanted to talk about was the Celestia Angels list. And this is another sort of resplendent angel deck. Um, where we see that showing up as a four of, but as well as Takatli Honor Guard, which feels very similar to Brad Nelson's deck. Uh, but we kind of stray off the path here a little bit, and you know we're we're looking to play Vivian Reed main, as well as you know uh, adversary tyrants himself, a Johnny, um, and then like this interesting sort of green uh, splash that. Uh, allows you to play things like Flower and Flour Flourish, which is a good way to be able to cheat a little bit on your lands. And um, uh, Assure and Assemble as a one-of. And uh, this is pretty interesting, but I like... I like this card. I like that it is you know, it is something that you can do at instant speed to make creatures. And sometimes that's that's exactly what you need after a, you know, a, a wrath or something of that nature. Uh, so I definitely really like that being able to be like, okay, well I will keep my Vanguard alive and then end of turn. I will assemble. And then I've, I have like what seven power on the board, even after, right. even after a wrath. So, uh, and I really like uh, a lot of what, what's kind of going on with this, with this list. Yeah, it's really interesting to me to see a green white list not that doesn't want to play March of the Multitudes, which really seems to be yeah. a pull into Selesna. I, I think like I like a Johnny here. Like there's a lot of good two drops to ring back, th especially like Thorn Lieutenant, for example. Like yeah, which has shown itself to be a, a pretty strong two drop. And like if you're getting a guy when you have to target the removal spell, and then a Johnny's like, oh, it's back again. Like yeah. you just get those little pieces of value. And I think even comparing this to like Boros Angels we just talked about, like I kind of like this because there's a lot more places to get just a little bit of extra value. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Planeswalkers are no small equation to that. And, I mean, like you get to play Carnage Tyrant, like you get you get to have that out of your sideboard, which is just like a huge, uh, you know, to me a big deal for your control matchups. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. So. Um, but I like what, what the, a lot of what this deck is doing. Uh, the ten or two dryad. Uh, that's a that's a that's a great card that could just like get out of hand. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. Once it gets going, like you're dead. Like you, <laughs> it, it's um, you know ver verdant what force is that is that the yes, card? Yeah. Yes. Ver verdant force is, is pretty powerful. When it makes three threes, it really Re is real good. <laughs> real good. It turns out. Uh, I'm not sure like what you're boarding that in against. It feels like a lot of may may a lot of decks have pretty good you know control over over like creatures in this format so i i could see like for example so like boarding that against the decks that are going to have like immortal sons you know for yeah. your planeswalkers and honestly like in the mid-range mirrors where you just need to overload you know what i mean yeah. like you know like, okay you have those removal spells i all of my five drops are very good so i hope you have enough yeah okay so. no, I, I get that i like that um but yeah this is uh definitely a really cool take on what you can do with a uh, celestia in the in the format uh, and you know, when we look at the, the other list that's here, it's, um, it's similar, uh, obviously to the other Celestia tokens list that we we've taken a look at, but it still has some, uh, some slight variations. You know, we, we take a look and this one has Thorn Lieutenant in it as, as a four of, um, uh, and you know, we, we don't see any of like the, we, we don't see any of the, the, you know, a one drop or anything like that, except for uh Legion's landing that that's our, our one drop du jour. Um, we don't have any of the hunted witnesses or anything like that, so I definitely prefer that. And Thorn Lieutenant is also another card that feels like it it does a similar effect to you know the hunted witness. You know, and yeah. typically anything you know that's that's targeting this is probably going to kill it. And you get a one one, which is a similar effect. The one one's less powerful; it's not a life link or anything like that. But that that feels pretty minor overall. And um, yeah, I, I I definitely feel like this is more of a uh, traditional sort of list. We have a lot of threes and fours. Doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of experimentation. No, and it doesn't have to be. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. Um, and uh, I'm all, they're, they're, the sideboard to me feels of see, feels really suspect. Yeah, I don't disagree there. Um, like like citywide bus is a pretty interesting card. Uh, it probably has its it, you know place to to shine potentially. Um, and Night of Alm is powerful, but like going hard on the Nullhide Feroxes, that feels off to me. Yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with that. I feel like the the card that I want to go hard on is 
like Carnage Tyrant. Right. Like, that's the card I want to go hard on. And the the I don't know what the Nullhead Paradoxes are there for. Like you're you're already playing like Squire's Devotion for like your mono red, which I think is fine. Like that that was a serviceable card, you know, in previous uh, iterations of like where we've had like white weedy uh, aggressive. So like I think that's that's perfectly fine. And then we also see a sure assemble uh, showing up here on the sideboard in the Immortal Sun. But like I, the first thing I would do is figure out four better cards to play over Nullhide Ferox, <laughs> uh, and then like go from there. Right. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a reason to play like a four mana six six in the in the format that is relevant. But I don't know what it is. I, I don't either. I really don't. So because I don't even feel like the control decks like like they care about the card for like maybe a turn. Like they could take take a six and then well, I, kill with it. I think like, more than it. that though. Like if you, wh- wh- where are you voiding that card in? Because like. Maybe, maybe the, this is all I can think because maybe the control decks are loosening up on counter magic against those kind of decks. Maybe so. Maybe that's what they're taking advantage of. But and like, who knows? Maybe it could be for green black. But then again, if I'm going to play a card that I want like that for green black, I'm going to play Vine Mare. Yeah, that's I the card I want to play. I totally agree with that. So, uh, especially with like Squires of Ocean in the board. I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, say, sure, like, please suit it up. <laughs> yeah, let's play some. Let's play some hex proof. Actually, let's do that. <laughs> please. So uh, that that that's all I would say. Um, but I mean, I didn't top five the, the tournament, you know. With yeah, that's, the stack, that's, so fair, that's fair. That's fair. What do I know? Um, and then we have is it Phoenix, and then two more Jeskai control lists. I, I want to mention this is it uh, Phoenix deck only because it excuses a couple of things. It's not playing Goblin Electromancer, which is weird. And, and like, but in doing so, it just it's it's going all in on one mana um, like cycling card. So uh, yeah, you have yeah, all okay, four Crash Through it. and all four Warlord Fury. So you're not you're not as worried about the mana reduction, uh, which it has its bonuses. It really does because uh, there are a number of matches where it is hard to keep a Goblin Electromancer alive. Sure, and it's not really a fight worth picking. Yeah, and um, like this one, you're like, I don't even care. Like, I, it's not even going to be a thing for me. Right. I've optimized my list to just like cantrip through everything and get, <laughs> and get you dead. I will say I like Firemind's research on the sideboard here. Uh, one of the other lists, I don't know if it was one of the Jessica Control lists or the Is It, uh, one of the Is It, the other Is It Drake list had that as well. I, I think that is, uh, to me, that is a pretty spicy thing you can board in, uh, in some matchups that might have a hard time dealing with that you know, with a, with a, just a regular enchantment. Yeah, um, things like Jessica Control, for example, where you can just sit this on two and you know they don't kill you fast enough for you to not just start cycling through your deck and you can start like. It, that is a legitimate deck where you can start presenting like lethal with Firemind's uh, research. So I, yeah. I think that is something I want to test out. So that looks pretty cool. I would agree with that. So then a lot more just guy control. Jeez. Yeah, there. Like I said, it was definitely. Um, I, I did link the uh, day two metagame breakdown. So let me let me pull that up here real quick. They like to tweet these out now to make them hard, uh, you <laughs> even know, harder to, to find to, to to get to. But um, we you know take a look at that and see the most represented deck day two is still Golgari. Um, but following up uh, after that is going to be you know, is it Phoenix and just high control. And to me, it means that Jeskai Control just really had a, a pretty successful day two. Um, to see, you know, uh, Jeskai Control uh, only showing up as what eight of the uh, you know X one one or better decks. So, yeah, I would say like that that feels like they had a pretty good weekend. Yeah, um, the only deck I think we should, we could at least mention um, there were two copies of White Weenie in the top thirty two that are pretty yeah. close to each other, and we're talking like. Full on white weenie. We're playing Snubhorn Sentry. Nice. Sam, Sam Black would be happy. Yeah, Sam Black just like champ the champion. He's just writing in on that that Snubhorn Sentry. <laughs> uh, but this deck is like making good use of both Banalus Marshall and Venerate Aloxanon, um by trying to just overload on these lo- lower drops, playing a Johnny you know adversary tyrants. Um, I think this deck you know while the mana is obviously much better, uh, just literally twenty planes. <laughs> Um, I think it. I think it still suffers uh, compared to like Boros, just because you just lose access to a lot of like powerful sideboard cards and also um, removal spells. But I think like this is a cool way to go. Um, it's playing Pride of Conquerors in the sideboard, so I like the idea that it can just try to go faster. <laughs> like that's its sideboard plan. Is I'm gonna get faster. Uh, so I think it's pretty interesting. Um, but again, you know, the, we have White Weenie certainly can live in this format. We've got a lot yeah. of good powerful cards. No, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely agree. 
It, it does amaze me that in a mono colored format, we literally have mono red, mono blue, and mono white, uh, and and technically mono green still hanging in the fringes too. So, where are you at, mono black? You got your cabal stronghold. Let's do it. Yeah, I don't think the the other cards that exist that are are just good enough. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Darth right. Belzenlock disagrees. Well, he needs to step it up then. <laughs> all right. So that was uh, that was uh, all of our our standard coverage. I really feel like uh, this the you know the format is shaping up to be pretty good, and I'm uh, excited to see where it goes. Like I'm sure like GP Milwaukee will be a lot of fun, and kind of see where the, the the game the game goes and evolves. But it feels like we have a lot of strong archetypes. Um, you said, do you want to mention the standard classic just real quick then? Since, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know we're transitioning to the, the open, but you said we're done with standard. It would feel awkward to... Um, the the classic had a lot of similar things, though there's probably at least two things we should look at. One would be Ali Trazi's first place list. Yeah, his his five color Lich's Mastery uh, control list. Uh, this is a... I mean, it's it's Ali and Trazi. Uh, it, it is something that it should not shock anyone that he is going deep. Very, 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 very deep. So so deep that he didn't even know it existed until he found <laughs> it. Um, but it, it feels like in a lot of ways this is doing similar things to what you would expect a regular control list to do. Something like even if it's just like Jeskai or Esper. Um, it is doing a lot of those things, but it's also just doing a lot of like kind of busted things. Uh, for revitalize, so that that's just clearly a card that can that can go the <laughs> distance. But it, it kind of does exactly what you want this list to to be able to do. We have four revitalize and four gift of paradise. Like you're you're just gaining a lot of like extra life, which is fine, which is what you want in the in this list. And then a whole bunch of like g- good to mediocre c- <laughs> cards kind of thrown into this list. Um, we have things like. You know, Settle the Wreckage, Rascus Contempt, hey, we're cleansing Nova, we're, we're used to seeing those sort of removal spells. Expansion Explosion, we already talked a bunch about that card. But then you have these two Masterminds Acquisitions, and um, you get a lot of stuff out of that sideboard there. Uh, or, or main deck, but, but you know, a lot, of, a lot of that sideboard, you know, that's where we see, like, Carnage Tiber and Immortal Sun, like, just a bunch of, like, good good cards to, to get, including a natural, Nature Spiral, which is probably pretty important. <laughs> um... But uh, a lot of what you were doing in this list evolves around, like, Lich's Mastery, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, interesting. Um, also, definitely can get Dispersal, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so watch out for that. Yeah, that's awkward. Uh, and uh, Mirari's Conjecture, actually. And that card seems real good in this particular list. When you just have, like, a bunch of mana and a bunch of spells, and you're like, well, I'm just going to go off now, I think. <laughs> so, I, I this is, like, one of those lists where you just look at it and go, like, well, how do you... I'm like, I think I know how you win. Oh, no, I, I played against it. It's an infinite turns deck. Is it? Yeah, so it's playing two copies of Chance for Glory. Oh, okay, okay, okay I get turns it. Deck. I get so, it, I get it. Uh, Chance of Glory says you lose the game, but you don't. <laughs> Um, if you keep taking turns over so, and over again, you so, really well because you have Lich's Mastery, so you don't lose the game. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah, you just can't. Uh, so then you play the Mirari Conjecture and get back your Chance for Glory, and you make copies of it. Uh, and yeah, you just you just actually take all of the turns. No, I get it now. Oh, yeah, this, this this makes sense now. Yeah, I play I played against okay. this deck. I played against a one style Magic Online in the first game. Did not know what my opponent was doing until they cast the Lich's Mastery. Was like, oh, I saw this, and then I lost infinite turns. Then games two and three, I had Negate in my deck <laughs> and. That deck has a hard time with negate. Let me tell you. Yeah, no, so, I can see that. Uh, but you know, it's it's a it's a really cool deck. Um, the the it literally does take infinite turns, and uh, that's pretty pretty amazing. So uh, watch out for this because if your opponent just looks like they're playing nonsense, and you let your guard down, you just won't take any more turns. Yeah. So and like you still have even if you can't beat negate, you still have like this. Outside chance to potentially like get a carnage tyrant and resolve oh, it. Oh no, it, it has it has ways. Yeah, um, but I think it's pretty impressive. I also like how revitalize actually becomes a draw four when you have Lich's Mastery in play. Woo! <laughs> so oh, there boy. you go. Oh boy! But, well then, well, if you wanted to go deep and have a lot of uh, you know bulk rares. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, and that mana base is pretty expensive, though. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's in Carnage Sirens. It hits Carnage Sirens and Immortal Sons in the sideboard. The sideboard's more expensive than the entire main deck. Uh, <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool to see, like, uh, Ollie be able to, like, do basic, like, just basically build shenanigans and be successful with it. 
Uh, the only other deck I wanted to at least mention um, that was a little bit different was Grixis Control. We, we have seen this in the format already, yeah. uh, but we haven't seen it in a little bit, and uh, we see a, lo- a lot of things. You know, Thief of Sanity in this list, Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, which is kind of fell out of play, which is kind of interesting because Grixis Colors are fairly easy playable. We don't have Blood, you know, blood Crypt yet. But right. You can still play with Steam Vents and, and Watery Grave. So, like, yeah, and, and have a pretty decent mana base. Um, Doom Whisperer Dream Eater is here. Uh, I want to say that this deck is playing three disinformation campaign with a number of you know things like uh, discovery and dispersal um, as ways to sort probably of probably like thought erasure, I imagine. Um, so yeah, and four thought erasure, yes. Uh, plus like incidental like Doom Whisperer thought, you know, thought uh, Dream Eater, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think like that card has been underrated, uh, and, and I think it's something you should be aware of because there's a lot of decks that. Even like the Golgari decks, I think it's a it's an interesting way to try and beat them. Where they're just trying to get all this value, but if you just keep chipping away at their hand, you know, make you discard a card. Okay, thought erasure, you get this back. Make you discard a card. You know, all of a sudden, like it doesn't matter their value. You 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 are staying ahead of it, and I think that's pretty powerful. So yeah, uh, that is a card. I I you know we're not going to get ostensibly. If we do, it'll be in two sets from now, but we're not going to get any more um, surveil cards. So that might weaken this. You know, its chances going forward. But, it, it, you know, there's enough Surveil cards that are good that... Yeah, I think, like, just Surveil is just powerful enough to be an incentive to play. Yeah. Play, play cards that do it, so. Um, all right, so let's move into Modern. Uh, so we have a Open and a Classic. So the uh, um, uh, Open was in Charlotte this weekend. Uh, I believe it had a total of 452 players. At least that's how many players were there after round one. I, I checked like the round one standings, so that's how I got my numbers. <laughs> so I might be wrong, uh, but um, it was won by Amulet Titan, piloted by Will um, Pulliam. I'm gonna say, like William, but with pull instead of Will. Is it like Bill Pullman, but like backwards is a joke? <laughs> yeah, correct. But if you Bill uh, Pullman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, defeated Austin Robbins actually uh, in the in the finals playing Amulet Titan. We had an Amulet Titan mirror. I hate you both. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let <laughs> it die. Let <laughs> it die. Uh, was that we never die? Ugh. So um, now something that had been noted, I think, by Emma Handy is that like uh, Amulet Titan is just kind of one of one of those decks that probably doesn't have like a lot of bad bad matchups necessarily but i could also see like the deck just kind of losing to itself oh no it definitely does that now it is far less consistent than it was uh but you know we we see it have a lot of success in 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 this weekend's tournament here being in both first and second place and sort of the the newest card that i see getting played in in these lists is adventurous impulse which is uh kind of cool um but uh yeah i mean this the, these kind of uh these kind of lists these kind of decks are just trying to you know make a bunch of mana and then uh double strike you with a uh, primeval <laughs> titan like that's that's kind of what they're doing yeah and in in a lot of different ways and uh a lot of the times if you don't have a way to interact with them that's what they're going to do and it it could happen to you uh surprisingly fast and they also could just like make big walking ballistas which is also really bad for a lot of people it turns out um, but, uh, this is, uh, obviously a list that was, uh, you know, th- these kind of decks were definitely taken down a notch with the, uh, banning of Summer Bloom, uh, but are still showing that they could be very effective, uh, you know, uh, in powerful decks within the, uh, within the actual format, which is kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um, uh, it is, it, it is kind of miserable losing to these decks though. Cause like you can see it coming and you just can't stop it. You're just like, <laughs> but I don't stop playing. It's I just, coming. it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the it's the George Washington effect, as we <laughs> like to say. Um, but uh, yeah, now I just want to get a set of Primeval Titans and alter them all to be uh, ten foot uh, the the uh, twenty foot tall George Washingtons. <laughs> uh, but and also, if you don't know what we're referencing, just like look at look look like do a YouTube search for like George Washington like I don't even know what song, the, the song. George Washington song. yeah just find it and listen to it and not with your children no especially not with British children <laughs> <laughs> no not the British children <laughs> but uh mm. it's it's very good Man, it'll make you laugh it great when the hosts of the podcast you're listening to make a totally contemporary 10 year old internet joke yeah we're mm. old sorry uh, and then uh, I pre- I didn't even notice the third place list is it's Titan Ship. It's, it's Titan all Ship. It's all Titan. Primeval Time. It was Prime Time there. Go- gold, silver, and, and bronze medals all go to Primeval, <laughs> Primeval Titan. Titan. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like uh, 
big Manda decks had a pretty good weekend, but not the ones you might suspect. Well, I mean, to be fair, you see the day two metagame breakdown. Uh, the top two lists were humans with 13 copies and mono green trial with 13 copies. So, yeah, I would have thought those big, you know, those big land decks that had all been on the top of the metagame list would have done it, but nope. Nope. So... Uh, I've been taking a look at a Titan Shift list recently. I just want to see if there's any sort of uh, any sort of changes or anything of that nature. It doesn't really look like uh, doesn't really look like it. But tell you tell you what, Scape Shift though, more much more affordable card after the M19 reprinting. So that is true. So, so hats off to you, uh, Wizards of the Coast, for 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 doing that for all the nice people out there. Yeah, your one Prismatic Omen costs as much as your four Scape Shifts. So you yeah. did it. Proud of you. <laughs> Uh, but no, these uh, these lists d- don't look to have changed too much, uh, you know, since um, I think the newest card that we really see in here is the new dual land they got in uh, in with the Cinderglade that they, they got in Battle for Zendikar. So. <laughs> uh, oh, Carnage Tyrant uh, and uh, an Hour of Devastation. Oh, there too. you go. We there did. you go. Get to get to get rid of the, some of them Planeswalkers. Who boy. Um, all right. So let's move into uh, the the last sort of top half of the top eight here uh, with Azorius Control Pied by uh, Philip Loran. Um, and again, you know, not not too much uh, uh, of you know things that we haven't really seen before. This uh, this feels pretty pretty much what we exactly what we'd expect from Azorius Control. Uh, not shockingly, we have Caleb Shear showing up here playing Storm uh, here in fifth place uh, and JD Complar- JD and Complarens. Um, <laughs> I feel like I, I butchered her name for some reason. Uh, sorry, I'm a little cold. It's it's hard. All those <laughs> plosives are, are are hard to get out. When I, I just like that we have like our archetypal re- representations, right? Like yep. here's storm. Here's storm master. Yep. Followed by jund master. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, and she is playing three assassins trophies in her jund list. So. Um, I, that's, that, that's the assassin trophy check. I just wanted to see. I know that, um, uh, we also had, uh, soul, the, the rock, uh, Malka also playing in, uh, in, in this tournament. I wonder, um, I know he did a deck, a deck tech for his Golgari list. So if you are interested to see where that deck has, has gone with the, uh, introduction of, um, assassin's trophy to the format, definitely check out his, the deck tech that he did, um, on the event, uh, coverage page. Um, after JD, we have Bant Spirited, B- Bant Spirits, piloted by uh, Charles. Uh, is that Sadberry? Is that oh Sedberry? Sedberry, excuse me, <laughs> not Sadberry. Oh, he's so Sadberries. <laughs> and then in eighth place, we have is it Wizards? I yes, it is. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, you well, know, you, know, you asked the question. I didn't. Right? Uh, yeah, that's like a sweet uh, Adelie's the Cinder Wind, making it to modern. Congrats. Hats off to you, Adelie's. Hats <laughs> off to you. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've seen similar lists, uh, to, to this one kind of show up from here and there. Um, yeah, after, you know, we, we've had, you know, some pretty powerful stuff banned, like Treasure Cruise from these blue red, you know, uh, blue red, is it, uh, blue red, excuse me, Delver decks, excuse me. Um, it's nice to see that we still are able to like, just put a bunch of wizards together and like battle it out. <laughs> um, you even have Mutable going into the fray because yeah. Mutavolt's a wizard too <laughs> Mutavolt is definitely a wizard <laughs> uh, but yeah so uh, you know what a pretty like the top of the, the top eight is kind of uh, a little bit boring but like you had some some pretty interesting ones uh, kind of show up here at the, the bottom half um, and then ninth and tenth place were uh, humans and um, burn and um, is there anything else that kind of jumps out at you? Um, I think the lack of dredge in the top eight is kind of yeah. Surprising. There's what Ross Merriam in 16th place. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the first uh, time we we uh, we see it. It shows up, I think, uh, one more time uh, in 29th as yeah. well. So um, oh, and uh, in 32nd. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, Michael Coyle, local player. Uh, yeah. Grixis were he he has been trying to take all of the fun out of local events for probably about a year and a half now. <sighs> So uh, thank you, appreciate it. I'm uh, glad standards fun again. We're clearly, very happy <laughs> that you. Are. No, I, congratulations. Yeah. He's. I, I. I will say, like he is. There are some players who play those lists where, when you sit down and you're not prepared for that list, you're like, okay, I can do this. And he is. A, he is a player who I have sat down, and if I, I'm not familiar with his list, like I just haven't seen one or looked at it in a little bit. I will. I know that I'm going to punt the game to him. Like, does that, like I know that sounds weird. But, like I played some matches with him where it's just like I get halfway through the game and it's like. I made a decision tree poorly from turn two or three or four that I wish I could take back now. And I know he saw it. I know he knew it. Yeah. So like he, he streams with those decks and like, and you know, 
shout out to him. Like he he is really a, a master of that archetype. So. Yeah, and, you know, that's that's kind of like the appeal of those kind of archetypes because you you get to know exactly what your deck is doing. And not saying that people don't know all that already in modern, but your your deck has so many intricate pieces that you get to plan for so many matchups and so right. many archetypes in your deck that you get to prey on people's inability to understand what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I think like that is a lot of an appeal to, to playing something like a, a Grixis War deck where you're just like, oh, you messed up, boom, you're dead. <laughs> oh, you got, got you. <laughs> I, I also have to say, uh, when he streams, he uses the uh, prison mic. Uh, image from the office and that is just it's very good it's it's very good so. <laughs> it's it, there's a lot of flavor there's a lot of flavor there uh and, and we want, appreciate flavor here and at your instep we do we really do um and i also want to mention uh 27th and 30th place of runaway slash arclight red uh runaway red is different because it's playing runaway steamkin arclight red is not but these are both mono red versions of the arclight phoenix deck and we're kind of the first list that we sort of got a taste of um, you know, I, I don't know if they have the staying power in the format, but you know, like we didn't have an is it Phoenix deck this week like we did in modern, but you know, seeing these decks like using Arclight Phoenix in this way, you know, Arclight Phoenix and Bedlam Reveler definitely seem like you know they do jump high fives. Oh yeah, so for sure. I don't know how uh, a demon high fives a bird. <laughs> it's it's unholy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I won't lie to you, it's not pleasant. That's what the sound of thunder is. <laughs> What, what what's wrong with you? I saw a demon high five a bird. <laughs> oh, giant fiery lightning bird! <laughs> All right, well we're we're going to take a trip to the doctor now. No, I saw it. I seen it. I did. I drew three cards. I witnessed it. <laughs> oh man, is that the new Nike ad where yeah. it's just like they do this unholy high five and just like witness? It's like I don't want to. <laughs> I'd rather not. Please stop making me. I don't want this. So, but I think it's just cool to look at those lists and you know some of them are playing some pretty interesting things. I really um, like um, Ramen Up Ruins. Like I, I know it's only a, like a one of, but it feels like pretty good. Yeah, uh, Ramen Up Ruins is cool. Uh, one card that I think is really sweet in the um, the the ArcLight version, the uh, Andrew Schneider, uh, a card that was talked about a little bit. Four needle drops. Yeah, and flame jab. Man, um, just like playing all the the popper burn all stars. Well, it's true, but flame, flame jab is really interesting because flame jab is a way to turn like just playing the is it spells deck in standard. There are definitely times where you flood and you can't do much to mitigate it. You you try to, but you see so many cards, you're gonna see your lands. So you're hoping you can mitigate your lands with your flashback spells, essentially your jumpstart spells. Yeah. Here, once you see that first flame jab, then if you start flooding, which it's hard to do in an eighteen land deck, but if you start flooding, well, each one of those lands is a flame jab and. It doesn't take too many of those to turn on your phoenixes again. Yeah. So I, you know, it's definitely a, a play to a later a later game that this deck may not always be prepared to work for. But as a one like as a singleton card that can just be discarded and, and just sit there for later, I, I think that's pretty interesting. So um, yeah, turning anything that turns your land drops uh, your excess lands into more spells to your phoenixes uh, is worth at least taking a look at. So I like it a lot. I, I, I do too. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I've played Needle Drop in Popper, but it, it feels pretty good in Popper uh, when you're playing, like, <laughs> what, what essentially, you know, is a, a bird deck, which is a lot of what this deck is trying to do when you, when you really look at it. Um, so uh, it, it does feel like a card that's, that's worth it, uh, even though on face value, you may be like, well, this card seems kind of mopey, but it generates a lot of value when, yeah. a lo when your deck's so redundant. Yeah, I really like how these lists are really bringing Shrine of the Burning Rage back into the format. There's, there's just a couple of decks that just like, well, if that's sitting in play, you know, that that's a scary clock to look at. We're like, all right, we're just going to play now, but you, there's a bomb. <laughs> like, it is coming. Yeah, I mean, like, or it's something that people have to dedicate a card to that they don't want to. Yeah, the, yeah, a, a bad card. I yeah. mean, let's be honest, against the rest of the deck, so. Um, or, like, uh, like, I think about it in... In something like that, that uh, where people would want to have to like needle it, where it's like, well, I don't even want needle in my in my deck right, versus right, right. this, so it's like, oh, I, I think about a deck like um, like humans, for example, where this deck probably needs to become a bit of a control deck, right, where it just needs to like just kill creatures, uh, and you know you can just sit behind a shrine and just be like, okay, I'm gonna try and deal with the first few threats, and then. Yo, here you go. Yo, are you gonna are you gonna board? Like now, here's the awkward thing. You probably are boarding Knights of Autumn. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, but like, yo, know, it, it still adds some pressure that I think is interesting. So yeah, it, can, it makes them have to choose between like, well, do I want to kill this artifact, which I'm probably gonna do, but I'd probably rather gain four life. Actually, I'd probably rather try to stay alive a little bit longer because if I don't, then you might just kill me anyway. So like, I'm using this to 
you know, destroy this, which it may gain me for life, but my life total isn't going to change uh, until you hit me a bunch with your stuff, and then it's going to change. Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I you know I, I think the uh, the the open here was uh, relatively diverse, if, if but still interesting. You know, Amulet Titan kind of taking out the tournament is a sort of, a sort of thing that comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it's, like, it's the, what, those are the top, the only two lists in the top 32. Yeah, so, I, I mean, they, they had a good weekend. That always speaks to the power of modern. You know, modern has felt a little more stale than usual recently, but I think like when you look, again, a ton of lists in the top 32, innovations from, you know, coming from news, news the standard sets um, and, and a deck that was, you, you didn't predict was going to take it down. So I think like, that that's where that's what draws you to modern. Yeah, because it's exciting. It, the, the it literal does, any given Sunday. <laughs> uh, it does have that that, that uh, potentiality uh, with it um, that can uh, you know really spark your interest in playing something weird. Yeah. Um, and if you look even in the classic, we get a couple more lists too. Yeah, we have uh, uh, Braxton uh, Landon taking it down with uh, red green land destruction. Land, land destruction. Wait, what a tournament! It, it certainly did. Huh. Oh man, it's Weird. I just he's so close. I just can't wait till till we get to it winning an open. And uh, did, I thought it did. I thought we had that joke. Already. Did did we? Did we? Yeah, have I probably said we had that one. Okay, already. perfect. Well then, <laughs> just this is just more rubbins. This is just free rubbins. Then. It's true. It is free it's, rubbins. It's perfect. Uh, so yeah, gruel land destruction, uh, taking down the uh, the the entire thing here, beating out. Um, Mardu Pyromancer, yeah, hey, Pyromancer. back, baby. Uh, yeah, a deck that that it, you know hasn't been seen for a while. You know, really the yeah, uh, I think a lot of the the decks that have kind of been overshadowing it uh, have been like um, what uh, oh. Hollow well, One, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hollow One that, has been that deck hasn't been around either. No, it, it's kind of fallen off a, a little bit of a cliff here. Yeah, um, I, I think like that 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 deck just. Uh, I feel like a lot of dredge players actually like that deck, maybe. So that they, they're just like, oh, dredge is good again. I'm going to start playing that. <laughs> uh, I think, like, for Mardo Pyromancer 2, the big mana decks are just rough. They're yeah. Just, they're just going to be rough. So, um, But, uh, you know, this is a, a kind of an interesting... It's it's kind of interesting to see just for the sheer fact that you would think that a lot of these players that are playing this style of deck would switch over and, like, try to move back to uh, a green-black-based sort of deck just for Assassin's Trophy. Uh, but clearly, you know, uh, Chris Johnson showing, showing that you can still make it work. Uh, and the rest of the, the top eight we have is uh, Mono Green Tron, Azorius Spirits, Humans, Dredge, another Mono Green Tron, and then Elves, actually. So uh, we haven't necessarily seen that that list here uh, for a while. I, I assume that they uh, the, the, this list is it's not. Is it, it's actually not playing the uh, the Clan Caller. Hmm. Uh, which I kind of find uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit surprising. Not a whole lot surprising, but a, li- a little bit. Uh, quick aside: Did you know there's a standard elves deck running around right now? Uh, it's yeah, the the elf ball. Yeah, it's, elf ball with vanquishers banner. Yeah, which uh, I, the first time I played against that, I went, "What? <laughs> All right, well here's flyers." But I like what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought it was really cool the first time I saw it. Where I was like, "Wait." What are you doing? And they played the Vanquishers banner. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> like I get it now. So this this all makes sense. Fair enough. Well, you're dead anyway. So <laughs> I mean, it, it could present some pretty interesting clocks. So. I mean, like I, I imagine that it, it, there's a lot of people that you know are playing decks in standard. They're just like, oh, I can't do anything about that. That's weird. <laughs> I, I'm just dead. <laughs> Um, so another, th- I think one of the more interesting things to kind of bring up with, uh, modern is Infect and how Infect is slowly like kind of coming back into the format for like being pretty much nowhere for the longest time after the banning of, um, uh, probe. probe. Yeah. And it, it, I see, we see it both in the classic here and the, uh, actual open uh, a few lists actually pop up and i feel like that's really it's really interesting because they don't feel like they've got any cards you know from any any recent sets past um uh kaladesh you know past getting uh the the one mana plus two plus two and hexproof right blossoming defense blossoming yeah. defense yeah yeah um yeah they don't ever get creatures so uh, no cre- creatures are not <laughs> something that they they frequently get uh anymore uh in fact not not coming back at least not for anywhere close to to modern you might see it in like a commander list but probably not ever again um but i i just think like it's interesting to see these kind of lists you know really start uh, actually showing up again and you know being able to uh to, to to perform pretty well without having like a card that seemed fairly essential to their game plan like Gitaxia probe was just like so good in fact 
I, I you know, maybe contributed to that card getting banned. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do think that it is, uh, it's kind of interesting to kind of uh, see you week over week in Modern. So uh, kind of a, a deck that I don't think a lot of people have had to like really plan for in a lot of ways and now su- suddenly have to. Yeah. Uh, and maybe they could be preying on things like Tron being really popular. Yeah, that's fair. Because um, even though like people thought like Tron was going to go away because of Assassin's Trophy, it's like it just had like ha- has it like not go away, no. but like b- people will be scared off from playing it. It just hasn't been the case. No. So th- maybe they're able to uh, really take advantage of just having more positive matchups in the format. So, sure. but uh, I like I like it. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to mention is uh, Sleds and Taxes. Yeah. And I want to mention it for two reasons. One, because the deck's kind of interesting, and it is playing four copies of Swiss Army Knight. Yeah. Which I think is, you know, if you're going to build that direction, that's cool. And also, because Mikey Monday is one of the best <laughs> names. Like, you, like I want to announce that, like, for, like, and then, like, and versus Mikey Monday. So, like, does he have to find the rest of the days of the week in last names and, like, form a... They assemble? A super group? Does he have to find, like... Toby <laughs> Tuesday and Wendy Wednesday. Wen- <laughs> Wendy Wednesday. <laughs> oh my gosh! And like they're all led by Solomon Grundy. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I, I just like <laughs> Wendy Wednesday. You, you gotta find those people. That Wendy man. Wednesday is a news anchor. You know she is. <laughs> She's out there. She's out there somewhere. Oh my gosh. Well, but but also I think like we haven't seen taxes listen a little bit, and this is an interesting take on it. And uh, like four copies of Flicker Wisp and two copies of Restoration Angel again with the aforementioned Swiss Army Knight feels pretty good. Hey, and I bet uh, like Shalai is probably still annoying and modern. Oh yeah. <laughs> so obviously a little bit easier to deal with, but like being a lightning rod and like having to deal with it before you can touch anything else ha- is probably really super annoying. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean like. Also, when you get to play Shalai, and then you also get to play a land that has her effect on it, that's for a, a far better deal, uh, is is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, these these lists are, are really, really cool. I really enjoy them. Um, and I'm glad to see, like, it, people still be, like, trying to push, the, like, the taxes archetype. And I know, I think this is uh, based off of a, a list that uh, Wesco mm. put out once Night of Autumn was spoiled. And, nice. Yeah, I mean, like, Night of Autumn... It feels really good in these kind of archetypes. And again, uh, you know, having that off of an Aether Vial is choice. Yeah. So, a lot of cool things in Modern. A lot of cool things you could do. Like, Dredge, see, like people seem to be reacting correctly to Dredge and like keeping it from like taking over the format. It's still good, but uh, definitely beatable. Um, so, and like, like we talked about, there's a lot of interesting archetypes that are kind of being able to be viable due to how the metagame is shaping up. So, um you, you can really do anything you really want in modern. Like, just go do it. <laughs> um, but that's everything for our, our tournaments that happened over the weekend. Uh, that's happening this weekend is more modern. It's going to actually be GP Atlanta. So definitely kind of uh, follow that along and see where the moder- modern metagame is, is heading in the GP circuit because they are a little bit different than the open circuit. So, uh, But yeah, that's going to be everything that's happening. Uh, Eternal Weekend is also happening, but since we don't necessarily focus on Legacy or, or Vintage, it won't be something that we necessarily talk at length about. Go get that sweet chaos or play mat, though. Yeah, that 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 is pretty cool, actually. They that's that's like the the thing I get jealous about for they get general. they get real cool play mats. They get real cool play yeah. mats. They also get real cool prizes. That's like they true. get like that's giant true. like new art like p- pieces of power or uh, like uh, dual lands uh, that are oversized, obviously. Yeah, well, and, like, you get cool things when you're the one percent. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> um, but uh, if that's your if that's your bag, I mean, I like watching uh, vintage a lot. So I don't know if they're streaming it or not. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> a car Titan probably does, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, definitely, you know, that's something that you can uh, follow along with over the weekend via various means. I'm sure. So, um, but yeah, that's everything we have for this week. Um, if you want, uh, be sure to uh, you know give us a follow on Twitter. It's your end step when you add us at your end step. If you want to reach out to us, uh, we also do have a, a Facebook account. It's facebook.com slash at your and an email address, uh, which is at your at gmail.com. Uh, if you're listening to us via one of your Apple products, feel free to leave us a rating and a, a review. It really helps with uh, getting people list- to listen to the show. Also, uh, be sure to um, you know check out some of the other shows on uh, MCG Cast if you are listening to us via that platform. Plenty of interesting stuff to listen to in the magic realm. Uh, we also have a Patreon, so if you want to become a patron of the show, you can uh, visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash at your NSEP. And we really do appreciate all the people that do contribute to uh, each show that we put out. Uh, you help keep the lights on. We really couldn't do it without you. 
But that's going to be everything for us this week. We will catch you next time. Uh, also, uh, I do want to do a, a quick shout out to former uh, host of the show, Jordan Kennedy. He's getting married this weekend. Yeah, and uh, it's a, it's a pretty. <laughs> and I'm the best man. And I'm a guest. <laughs> <laughs> I have now been the best man for two out of the three possible hosts I could be the best man for. That's correct. So it's all right. I, so I, Dave, for well, your second. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's rude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. His wife is wonderful. I apologize. Yeah, it's just a joke. But uh, no, I just wanted to you know, say a quick congratulations to, to him and his, his fiance. Uh, and um, we uh, we wish them both uh, the best on their lovely wedding day. So, but we'll catch you guys uh, next time. You have a great one. Bye. <laughs>